Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today we're going to be talking about Bitcoin, and we're actually going to be looking at the path to $100,000 and $1 million. So if you guys like this content, please subscribe to the channel, turn your notifications on, and like the video. And also, uh, please check out this Telegram channel here. Um, if you want to download these charts, I will, I will put all of these charts you're about to see in this presentation in the pinned message of this Telegram channel. So if you want them, uh, you can go download them there. Now, um, we're going to step through this systematically so that I can ultimately explain, you know, a lot of my views on this in one video. Um, I, I posted a tweet the other day that talked about my views, and obviously people wanted, um, you know, something to show why I thought that, because a lot of people are new to the idea of lengthening cycles. Now, we're not going to be going over the evidence for lengthening cycles in this video. Um, I've provided that video a few a, a week or so ago. Uh, today we're just going to be looking at logarithmic regression and a realistic path um, that we might take over the next one to two decades that can get us to that that magic number. Um, so again, let's go ahead and, and jump in. Uh, this is the price of Bitcoin on a logarithmic scale. So if you're not familiar with logarithmic scales, um, each major tick mark is 10x up from the prior one. So this would be 0.1, this is $1, $10, $100, $1, $1,000, and so on and so forth. These logarithmic regression lines are just made in an optimization package to try to um, to try to show you know the the overarching trend of price on the macro scale. And if you note, each time we peak, it's around two and a half logarithmic regression lines lower than the last time. So let's go ahead and, and jump through some of this stuff. Now, um, one of the things I, I wanted to note here is if you if you remember, we recently had a 50% drop in the price of Bitcoin, um, and that was on uh, March 13th. Now, this what I'm showing is daily data, um, and uh, we we noted that in the first cycle we came down to this logarithmic regression line. These are the same logarithmic regression lines, guys, that I've used for for months now. Um, we came down to this yellow one here. Uh, then in the last cycle we came down to this one and in the current cycle we came down to the same one that we had come down to in the prior cycle um, but it still wasn't uh, you know we had not dropped another log line and if you look at the primary regression band videos that I show um, we had not gone to the undervaluation area of that line and now we are there so if you look, you can see where we dropped. Now the issue here is that we are only looking at daily data. And daily data showed that the price closed, you know, uh, around $1,500 or so higher than the minimum. Now if you took the minimum of around $3,800 and put that in, then that's what it would look like. It actually would have come down to this bottom line. Um, but regardless, now we're, we're back up to the orange line. It's possible that this could hold, uh, you know, some level of, or, uh, you know, I don't want to say resistance. I mean, at the end of the day, these are just imaginary lines, and the price doesn't have to respect anything here. Um, but just to give you an idea of what price has done, you can see that it respected the yellow line uh, back in the first cycle. It respected this line, the orange one, in the in the last, or two cycles ago, and then in, in the in the current one, um, you know, maybe we'll be between these bands, um, or it's possible we, we, we pop back above, but ultimately we want to show the logarithmic regression growth over a long period of time. So let's go ahead and go back because we're just going to look at daily data, so we're just going to show it as dropping down to this point. Now, if you're not familiar with the primary logarithmic regression band, what it does is it fits non-bubble data. So we're just looking at fitting data in these regions that's non-bubble data, quote-unquote non-bubble. And the way that I define that is somewhat um, dis you know, discretionary up to me, um, just to identify phases where the price of Bitcoin isn't, you know, in this, in this speculative um, mania phased uh, bubble. Um, and if you do that, you get this dashed yellow line, okay? But we say, okay, this is a theoretically a good time to buy Bitcoin based on prior um, historical performances. Um, and, you know, this is not financial advice, but this would, you know, historically, this would have been a good time. Now, getting to that exact point on the line, uh, you know, waiting for that time can be 
rather difficult. Um, so we provide a tolerance and say, okay, well, when the price of Bitcoin is within this green band, um, if you're buying in this band, then you're, you're probably doing a good thing. Um, you can even see that in 2019, we came out of the ban right up to this purple regression line, um, uh, but ultimately we, we came back down. Uh, so, and, and by the way, the dashed lines that are going vertically on the page, those are the halvings. Uh, so you can see we're getting pretty close to the halving that's going to occur next month. So um, what is this, you know, we see the primary regression band, um, but I've also had people say, well, what about a, a band at the top to, to show what that trend is? So here is a yellow dashed line to kind of show the trend if you just look at the peaks. Now, I don't put as much weight in the peaks because you know, the the fact that Bitcoin got to $20,000, um, you know, it, it easily could have peaked at 15000 It easily could have peaked at 25000 The fact that it peaked at 20000 I mean, it was just a, a mania growth phase. And I don't tend to put that much weight in um, an irrational uh, time. Because when there's, you know, when, there, when dumb money is coming in, uh, it, it's just irrational, based, you know, what's going on the price. And, and that's why, you know, a lot of people will measure coins based off where they are from their all-time high. And I think that's a completely ludicrous way to look at it. Um, it's such an arbitrary metric that is created by dumb money, and you shouldn't measure it based on dumb money. You measure it based on smart money. And the smart money is coming in in, in the green band. Okay, not not up here. Now let's put a tolerance on this at least, so that it looks similar, um, and and we can see that ultimately, you know, if we if we were to come up and peak back in this red band, you can see that they they do start to converge to one another. Um, so let's let's take this a step further and say, well, how do we get to a hundred thousand dollars? Well. I've often I've often said that you know I think we're in lengthening cycles. I don't think we're going to be peaking in 2021. Um, it's possible, and if that happens, I will be very happy. Uh, I won't be upset about it, at, you know, one bit. Um, but I do think there is a significant amount of data to show that it is a lengthening cycle. But you know, we've covered that extensively in other videos. Um, now, if if it is a lengthening cycle, if that is the name of the game, then we might expect ourselves to peak. I would say the earliest, the hypothetical earliest I could see it happening would be say the the fourth quarter of 2022. Um, I think you know around summer of 2023 is is around there is is pretty likely plus or minus some tolerance you know whether it's six months to a year I, you know i can't really say for sure um but i think it's going to be somewhere closer to the next having um than it is to the one that we're about to experience because it, you know you can look at at the first having and the price you know, following the first halving was, you know, about a year away. Um, whereas the second halving, you can see it was, it was much further away. I think we're going to continue shifting um, closer and closer to the, to the next halving, which means, um, and this is where a lot of people disagree, and that's fine. I don't expect everyone to agree. Um, and typically, you know, if you put out a theory that is that goes against the grain, a lot of people are going to, you know, um, get upset because it goes against what they think or, you know, very much want to happen. Um, but again, I think it's important to at least hear out all the theories. That way, if your theory of, say, a four-year cycle doesn't come true, it doesn't mean that... Bitcoin isn't going to, to peak again at, say, six figures. It just means that the nature of the cycles are changing and that they're getting longer. Um, uh, so that's that's the, the, the point I want to make there. Um, so I, I, I basically just drew out a line out until, you know, say the middle of 2023, um, peaking somewhere, uh, uh, you know, slightly higher than $100,000, and then ultimately returning to the green band. Um, so this is this is ultimately what I see happening, or you know some some element of it. I mean, obviously, exactly this won't happen. Um, I can assure you, you know, for full disclosure, had I drawn this line back in 2019, I would not have predicted us to go to fourteen thousand dollars in 2019. Um, but again, I mean, until until 
you know, I would say until we really get to um, 2021 uh, and, and maybe even later 2021 at that, we're ultimately just playing in the sandbox right now. And, you know, I think the goal is to accumulate as much Bitcoin as you can for as low of, uh, as low of a price as you can. Um, that's the, the main thing that I'm doing and the main thing that I'm telling um, people who follow me that I think that's what they should do from a non-financial advice perspective. Um, so now I know many of you will say, okay, well, what if we extend these lines? Like what if, you know, what if we just extend the regression lines? How long would it take us to get $3 million? Um, well, if you do, you can see that they ultimately converge somewhere around the year of 2040 and they converge uh, closer to a value of $5 million um, in 2040. Now, a lot of people will note that if you look at the $1 million line and just scroll over, then theoretically, if we just come up to say that, that middle dash line, um, then maybe we would hit it in 2030. Okay, and that would be if this trend continues, where we, you know, we, we stay exactly on that trend. Um, now, is it possible we do that? Yes, of course it's possible. Um, you know, there's no telling what dumb money can propel the price of Bitcoin to. Um, but at the same time, we have to take into account the fact that, you know, things change over time. And if we had only fit the data in this region to a logarithmic regression curve, it would have looked something like this. It would have predicted us getting to a million dollars you know, in 2018, <laughs> um, if we had taken, say, you know, out until this point or so, this is what it would have looked like. You can see the yellow line would have got us to a million dollars in, say, 2029. Uh, so it, it really depends on how much data you have. And every cycle um, that we go through, I think it's going to pull down that regression line further and further and further because the, the growth is going to continue to decay more than this regression line is predicting. That is my theory. It's it's certainly possible that uh, you know we we follow this line and it converges and maybe we get to a million dollars in say 2032. Um, but ultimately, I think what's more likely is we're we're going to see something, um, and I'm just drawing the lines here at a hundred thousand and a million dollars. I think ultimately we're going to see something like this, where it goes up to a hundred thousand dollars, maybe just north of it in 2023, um, and then in the next cycle that I think will probably peak somewhere around 2031, something like that. Um, maybe it'll be around say 300 to 500 thousand dollars and this is not just me throwing numbers out there I do have a lot of other videos that talk about where I get these numbers from and then ultimately I think that the final one uh, to potentially get to a million dollars will be sometime out in 2040 and you can see how these cycles uh, will continue to get longer and longer based on the way that I drew them uh, and some of you think okay well this looks too flat well there is a video also that I made that shows that the macro level volatility or let's say the annualized volatility of Bitcoin is decreasing um, and so it can't always it can't always see these you know these crazy returns in such a short period of time. It's just not going to happen. It's going to take more and more money to move the price. Ultimately, it's going to become um, less, you know, less stable. Or sorry, it's going to become more stable. It's, it's not going to fluctuate as much um, on a macro scale. Uh, so that's, you know, that's primarily the point I want to make. So ultimately, this is what I see happening over the next two decades. Um, I see us getting to $100,000 sometime, you know, 2023 plus or minus some, you know, some tolerance, maybe six months to a year. I certainly don't think it's going to happen in 2021. Um, I think the next cycle is going to be even longer. So if you're at least in crypto right now, I would say consider yourself lucky because even if the lengthening cycle theory is true, then you actually only have to wait you know, a few more years. Whereas there's gonna be dumb money coming in at the peak up here. And if, if it's coming in there, then they might have to wait, you know, seven, um, you know, say six or seven years just to get back to that price. Um, and then a few more years maybe for another speculative bubble. And again, here again, it, it might take a, a really long time. Um, so, you know, I know everyone wants to see Bitcoin go to a million dollars tomorrow. And obviously we would all love it if that were to happen. We would all love it if it went to $100,000 tomorrow. But I think it's important to take into account other ideas and other, um, you know, I want to say like say evidence or 
theories that take into account certain you know certain types of information um, uh, to come to different conclusions than what you are necessarily accustomed to seeing um, in say the four-year cycle approach uh, so just at least consider it um, let me know what you guys think about it in the comments below uh, whether you think uh, this this makes sense or not or if you really think it's it's four years um, or just yeah let me let me know what you think um, and then also I want to point out that this does not take into account um, uh, any fundamental factors. I mean, if you know, if governments, you know, take certain stances on cryptocurrency, or you know, the economy goes into a global depression for um, ten years, obviously, it does not take this. It does not take that into account. The only thing it's taking into account is the math um, based on what the price data has told us in the past and the way that it has. Um, uh, increased and the percent the the rate at which it has grown, and it looks at at that and the the time between valleys of um, bear markets and and so on and so forth. So again, I know that's not for everyone, um, but that is what we cover here. And if you guys like the content, again, please subscribe to the channel. If you want to talk about these charts and you want to download them, uh, then check out this public Telegram channel here, and I will have them in the pinned message if you'd like to download them, just so you can look at them instead of having to look at them on a video. And then finally, if you want to support the channel, I do put out a weekly newsletter um, as well as publish other reports. I published a 21-page report on Bitcoin in January um, called Bitcoin Letters. Um, but anyways, if you guys want to support the channel and even uh, join, there's a private Telegram group that I have, um, then check out this link here, patreon.com slash into the cryptoverse. Or I do have a... Um, uh, you can you can also pay with with cryptocurrency if you would prefer. And that's just for people who want to support the channel and and uh, uh, you know get a little bit of exclusive content um, that other people aren't getting. So regardless, please subscribe to the YouTube channel at least for the free stuff. And I I'm uh, we'll see you guys next time. Bye.